Soul Ash 2, the RPG roguelike game that keeps on giving. It just seems to be getting better and better with active mod community, constant updates. So in this video, I'm going to be going through a few of the modded races that you can select to start your adventure. So whether you're a casual player or you like to role play, picking the right race is crucial for this game. So at number one, we've got the Dragonkin. So the Dragonkin are a formidable and ancient race, embody the majestic essence of dragons in humanoid form. Towering in stature with scales that shimmer in a myriad of iridescent hues, they command an imposing presence. These beings are gifted with a regal and otherworldly aura, reflecting their deep connection to the primordial forces that govern the realms. Physically, Draconics possess a blend of dragon and humanoid features. Their eyes gleam with an intelligent ancient wisdom, often radiant with a hint of the elemental magic coursing through their veins. Elongated, serpentine, tails gracefully trail behind them, capable of both finesse and strength. Their hands bear elongated claw-like fingers, each tip with razor-sharp talons. Even though draconic blood runs through their veins, granting them immense strength and endurance, the dragonkin do not develop wings. So this race, the Dragonkin, they live to around 2,000 years and if you select this character you will get Strength plus 3, Endurance plus 2, Intelligence plus 2, Dexterity plus 1 and Willpower plus 1. So they're, they're pretty strong. And we've got a few different portraits on the Dragonkin which you can select. So for number 2 we have the Ratsmen. Despite the prevalence, rat folk face a range of challenges in developing their own settlement. Skilled in survival, rat folk nonetheless encounter hurdles that hinder the full prosperity of their society. Internal conflicts and crime lead to a decline of settlements due to the extent that after 100 years on the world map, there may be no surviving rat folk settlement left. So, with this race, they only live to around 68 years, but you get very high intelligence, plus 3, high dexterity, and they have got infravision, so they can see in the dark. And we've got a few different portraits for the rat men that you can choose from. So number three, we're going straight to the Dark Elves. So Dark Elves are a cunning race resembling their light dwelling counterparts, but possessing shorter lifespans due to spending more time underground. Their skin tone isn't overly dark, allowing them to pass as regular elves when necessary. Known for their agility and stealth, they rely heavily on ambush tactics in combat. In contrast to the peaceful lifestyle, lifestyle of most elves, dark elves harbour grudges and thrive off conflict. This fierce warrior spirit fuels their desire for power and domination. So with the dark elves, they live up to around 300, year, 300 years, so they live quite long, and you will get strength plus one and dexterity plus three, so they'll be really good for dagger plays or bow and arrows or anything that's similar to that, or sneaking or... That sort of behaviour, you want to go pick a Dark Elf. And we've got different portraits for these. The next up, number four, is probably my favourite race to play. It is the Undead. So centuries ago, the mighty citadel of Nokbarud fell to a devastating siege led by formidable ancient dragons. Despite their valiant defence, the defenders cornered and isolated, retreated and invoked a forbidden oath of eternal vengeance. United in their resolve, men, women and children pledged to fight to the death and beyond. Though the citadel lay in ruins, the indomitable spirit of its defenders endured, giving rise to the first revered undead from the remains of those who fell defending their home. So undead, uh, being long dead, they cannot succumb to the passing of time, so they cannot die. So you can get infinite playtime with these, they will not die. Um, and the skills that they come with, they have very high willpower, so they're really good at like, magic if you want to pick a magic for a uh, starting skill. But they do have endurance minus two, which means they will take more physical damage. They've also got infravision, so they get full sight and range in darkness and half in daylight. But they also have disabled consumption, so they don't need to eat or drink. Okay, number five is the Dijin. Creatures of pure magic infused with emotive will. These ancient beings once dwelled plentifully in the deserts and ruled the sands, though an ancient war saw their entire race enslaved for their power. The, the Dijini is incredibly rare and very few have ever escaped their bonds and broke their chains. They are known for being quite chaotic in their dealings with other races. Though Dijins are mortal, they are an embodiment of magic itself. Embroidered creation and power. 
Most Dijins are slaves of powerful binding magic and their goal is to find freedom. So these live for a very long time. So the Dijini live for around 600 years. They have got very high intelligence. So you can, uh, they will have very high magic power. They also have very high willpower. So their magic defense is quite high as well. And they also come with levitation. So they use intellect instead of strength to carry objects. So the higher your, your intellect, the more things you can carry. And we've got a few different portraits. We'll look at portraits on the Dijini. So next up, number six, the final one. This is probably the newest mod that's out so far with all, through all the races that were covered is the Goatsman or the Beast, as some people call them. So the Goatman, savage half-human hybrids, their barbaric ways drove them to near extinction when most races decided they needed to be exterminated. Now only a few remain scattered and afraid. So the Goatmen, they don't live for very long. They only live for around 70 years. But they, you come with plus one endurance, plus two strength, so they are quite strong and powerful. Um, they have plus two dexterity, but they have got minus two intelligence, so they're not very strong wielding magic. So you're probably more likely to go for something like the axe fighting or sword fighting on these. And the last skill, passive skill that they've got, they have got better hearing, so you will see enemies further away, they will hear them. And you will know they're coming. So that concludes the modding races you can play in Soul Ash 2. So let me know in the comments what race you're going to start off with in your next playthrough. Please drop a like on this video. Please subscribe. It's free. And I'll see you in the next one.